Record. Okay. So all I've done is I took our data that had been collected over plenty, of, and I'm trying to do it on this, uh, for many years. Um, so 2019. Okay, over years, uh, many a couple semesters. So uh, I, we did this in the summer of uh, 2019, and then fall 2019, spring. So this is like the fourth semester we've done. I've done this, and um, these are the results. Okay, these are broken up into age category. Um, you know how old everybody is. Okay, notice most of the people are between 29, 20 and 29, you know, really between 29 and 39. Um, but we want to see, are these groups the same? You know, do they have, um, did they get the, the same number correct? Okay, so to do that, we could test this versus the, the, you know, we could do a hypothesis test and say, this group is equal to this group, and 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 this group is equal to this group, then this one's equal to this, this one's equal to this, this one's equal to this. So you can see that this has uh, lots of, let's see, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five plus four plus three plus two plus one is 15 tests. I could do 15 hypothesis tests, which probably nobody wants to do. Um, so, yes, it's being recorded now. Uh, so what they have to, this, the ANOVA test allows us to see, is the average of all of these things the same? All right, and so that's the, hypo that's the, um, the null hypothesis is that they are all the same. Okay. The alternative is that at least one is different. Not that they're all different, but one of them is different. All right. And um, from that, we can look to see well which one is different if there are differences at all. Um, but you know, we're really kind of hoping that they're not. You know, just because you know, we want to. We would like to hope that these groups are the same. If we're doing a test on uh, let's say, um, you know, planting, you know, growing flowers, or growing a plant, and, um, you know, one of them you have the control, it's in the sunlight, it gets the right amount of water, and you sing to it, and all that other good stuff, you know, the, you do all the things you're supposed to do, and then you change those things with different plants, you can see, well, which things can I take out, you know, that affect it, but I first want to look to see, is there no effect on the growing of plants? And then, if there is, I can then look to see well from the, you know, the the basis one, which ones had, um, which ones had differences. And so you can, you know, you're really only testing that baseline one versus all the rest of them. But the, this ANOVA test at least saves you from having to test all of them first and finding out well there was no differences at all. Um, and so that's what we use an ANOVA test for. And so in, uh, we don't care if these columns are the same length. All right, that's not an important thing. We just have to make sure we collect all the data. So with um, Excel or Google Sheets, um, actually I have to see in, um, does it even have Google? Uh, Um, does it even have it in this? Looks like it does, but sometimes it's an add-on. So, um, Yeah, okay. But where is the Yeah, 
Thank. Oh, so just thank you. All right, now how do I run it? Um, is it because I think it's an add-on, but. Um, We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. There's it, it, there's a it, there's an add-on I have to put in. Um, Oh yeah, installation. All right. Yeah, there's no script. That's what I thought. All right. Um, darn. Okay. So I'm assuming it's a. I usually just run it in Excel, but I, since I had it in Google Docs, I figured I'd just leave it in Google Docs. And of course, um, that was a bad idea. Is it because I know there's an add-on for it, but I, do I have it? Okay, yes, I'm mine. All right, that's what I thought. All right, so I have. Okay. You're right there, Sean. Sounds like you're gonna die. You're gonna yeah, explode. <laughs> All right, add-ons, get add-ons, Excel Miner. Okay, so I got to install this um, add-on into. Because even in um, in. Even in. Um, uh, Excel, there is like this is an add-on, um, but I always have it already installed. Um, it's weird, like these some of these things that, like I said, in Excel that they have um, as add-ons are really unnecessary because they don't take up any space. And um, like why they don't leave things on or, or plug, plugged in is beyond me. Um, Okay. All right. Yay. Okay. So now I have to go, here's my Excel miner and start. Now, the reason I'm doing it in this is because one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we do actually have six columns. So I, <coughs> I could do this in the calculator as well. Um, <coughs> just remember as long as you have, because it only has six columns of data that it can put in. Um, if there was a seventh column, I wouldn't be able to run this. 
So now I need to find ANOVA. OK. Single factor. So because there's only one thing that we're using to break this up is age, we have a single factor ANOVA. And then it asks us, well, where is our data? Our data is in this information here. OK. And it's in column format. There's a label in the first row. Um, our alpha, just with everything, is 0.05. Um, and then where do we wish to put it? Our answer? Well, let's put our answer right here next to it. And then I click OK. And it takes a couple minutes because, oh, it's done. All right, that was quick. So what it does is it runs its table. OK, it creates. It put it over the information. I said to put it there. Someone's background is really noisy. Do we mind muting ourselves, please? Oops. And Professor, after you do all of this, you're going to show us how to do this on a calculator? Yes, I am. Let's get the data again. Uh, one, okay. All right, it's done. <laughs> okay, so what it does is it takes all of our groups, all right, and it counts them, finds out how many there are, adds them up so it can get the average and the variance. So it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it, it Remember, the variance is just the standard deviation squared. So it takes the, it finds it's really, because, but ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. So it's looking at the variance versus the standard deviations. Um, so it's these, but this is just the square root, uh, this is just the square of our standard deviations. So it finds all of those pieces, all right, and then compares them. And it does a ratio, it makes a ratio of um, what this is, is we have the sum of the squares and the means of the squares between and within. So um, it looks at each column, finds the averages, OK, and the standard deviations. And then it also takes the averages of the averages and the standard deviation of the averages and looks at those pieces and finds those two numbers. And then really, it, it just, this, st this F statistic is just a ratio you know, of, um, and here's our totals, OK? We take a uh, a ratio of all of our pieces, all right, and get this value, which we then look up uh, to see if it's you know if the p value is less than alpha, all right. Um, notice the degrees of freedom seem a little strange, okay. So this degrees of freedom between groups is just how many groups there are minus one. Then this one here is how many total things there are minus the number of groups, minus the degrees of freedom of our groups. OK. And then if we add these together, um, we get n minus 1, which is you know how many things there are less 1. So this is the number of groups minus 1. This is the number of things minus how many groups there are. And then the total is just those two added together. Same with this. This is the sum of those squares. They added those things together and got this these totals here. All right. Um, 
The means of the squares is just the sum of the squares divided by the degrees of freedom. And then our F statistic is the average of these two uh, mean squares. So we take the between group and divide it by the within group, and that's how they got this number. So there's a lot to do to calculate this by hand, which is, again, why we don't calculate things by hand. Um, this takes seconds. I mean, the, to count up how many things there are would take me longer than that. Um, I didn't even know there were 164. Uh, so this creates a quick, easy way to then look to see, are these different? I look at the p-value. And if this is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and say that they're different. If it's bigger than 0 0.05, we say, well, no, that from what we see, the, the groups are the same. So they get the average number of things correct. So notice they all have a right around 15. Like this is 13 and a half, 14. And then these groups here are 15. And then this group here did worse. You know, this did 14.2. So they're all in fairly close to the same range. And it, because of the variances, that's where those pieces come. So it, we find these things and then calculate these pieces based on the averages and the variances. So there's a lot going on that you don't have to worry about doing. All right. If I were to do this in a calculator, I get my calculator. And I turn it on because that's the first thing you had to do. I don't want it over there. I want it over here. But why? Oh, OK, it's on. All right. All right, whatever. OK, so we go to stat. And we have to put our data in. All right. So edit. I don't know why this is being so difficult today. All right, fine. Stay there. Stay there. That's fine. All right, so edit. And we put our data in, I'm going to just clear all this out. So stat, uh, clear lists, list one, comma, list two, comma, list three, comma, list four, comma, list five, comma, list six. Unfortunately, there's no way to clear them all out at one time, so you have to do that. All right. So now I'm going to put in my data. And I'm not going to put all this in. I'm going to put in like the first, uh, welcome, that's even a lot of data. I'll put in, I guess I can do that. All right. So I this is 15 out of 20. So I'm just putting in the numbers, 15, 8, 5, 13, 10, 13, 18. 16, 19, 14. And then I put the next one in. And I'm just going to do three rows. So I'm only going to do uh, the, these three groups here. I don't feel like doing them all. Uh, but it's, you, that's all we, we would just put it. We had to put all our data in 18, 13, 14, 13, 19, 10, 13. 10, 18, 12, 16, 16, 15, 15, 12, 15, 15, 18, 13. OK, so we put our data in as we need to. And remember, these don't have to be the same length. All right. Then we go back to stat. And we're going to go over to tests. And ANOVA test is the last test on the list. So if you just go up, it brings you right to ANOVA. And then we just tell it, where is our data? Well, it's in list 1, comma, list 2, comma, list 3. And hit Enter. And it gives us our information. So this here 
is right here. All right. It takes the, the these pieces here and sticks them up to the top. So here's our F statistic. Here's our P value. And then it finds these things. So the F factor, they call it act factor versus the um, a note for the um, Excel calling it between and within. So we have factor. The degrees of freedom was two because remember there were only three groups that I did. Subtracted one, I got two. There's the sum of the squares. There's the mean of the squares, so these two divided together. And then the within one is the error, and that's degrees of freedom was 27 because it was all the things minus how many groups there were. There were three groups. It finds the sum of the squares, the mean of the squares, the um, and then this SP. I don't even know what the uh, SP is. Um, and oh, probably this right here, this F critical. All right. Um, and then it looks and creates those values. So it finds our, but again, all we really care about is this P value. And this P value is 0.66. So that's bigger than 0 0.05. So these three groups are the same statistically. All right. They have, there's no difference. We can't say that there's, you know, statistics evidence to show that they're different. So they got those 10, those 30 people got the you know the same questions number of questions correct all right and that's all that that is doing is it just looking at the data and saying okay are these the same how you get error in the calculator oh um error in the calculator um I don't know. Like when you did it, you got an error. Oh, oh, scroll down. Oh, okay, that's what I was like. I'm like, I thought you said you got an error. Yeah. So you see that there's these two little arrows here. This tells me I have information higher or lower. And so when it does the test, it only has the down arrow. So I just click the down arrow, and then it shows me the rest of the information. Thank you. I thought you said you got an error, and that was, <laughs> and that was what was confusing me, Paul. Padma, I, I thought it, it, you said you had an error, so I was trying to think of what error you might have got. And I'm like, so. Uh, um, this one. Oh, that's okay. It was my misunderstanding of the question. So, did you actually? said it perfectly I just wasn't reading it right um, so as you can see there's not a lot of homework questions so the ANOVA test actually does one other thing it allows us to test um, uh, R's you know if um, S is what am I saying R's it, it allows us to test our two standard deviations the same but they don't have that on here uh, the um, chi-square test that we did yesterday, last week, well, yesterday, uh, allows us to test to see um, is a standard deviation actually, is a variance equal to a specific number? And then the ANOVA, this ANOVA test allows us to test, you know, our two um, standard deviations, our two, two basically standard deviations the same, um, but we, they don't have it in here, so you don't have to worry about learning it. That's the nice thing. I may find some and, and uh, bring them in for some point in the future, but um, it used they used to be in there, and then they took them out when they went to the next when they went to web assign. So I'm like, whatever, that's fine. Fewer things to have to learn, always a good thing. All right, so uh, three students, Linda, Juan, and Javier, are given some rats, all right, and some stuff to feed them, all right, and they've been given the same amount of rats, all right. Um, and at least this one, they're in the same order, so that's a good thing. Um, now, they just want to see uh, how much weight they've gained, depending upon the three formulas that they've been given. So they just have to put this data in. So we go to stat. I'm going to clear all my lists. Actually, clear. I'm going to be lazy, second, enter, second, enter, enter. There, they're all cleared. 
So I go to stat, I go to edit, and I put my data in. So I have 45.6, 42, 44, 48.9, 45, 49.1, 43.3, 41.2, 48.7, 46.4, 53.5, 43 48.3, 7.4, 1.5. Okay, so I put my data in. Now, the null hypothesis, like I said, is that all of the means are the same. So if there were six means, you'd have h1 is equal to, uh, sorry, mu1 is equal to mu2, is equal to mu3, is equal to mu4, is equal to mu5, is equal to mu6. So all the means are the same. And then at least, you know, here it says at least uh, two of the groups are not equal, which really just means that at least one of them is different. You know, there's no, I mean, uh, that's how I, it's, it's easier, it's, it's shorter. So, um, but as long as the idea is the same. So, you know, they're all the same, or at least one of them is different. And obviously B is what is an all hypothesis, and they've, they're not going to, there's only two options, so that's always nice. In C, enter the exact number as an integer fraction. So what is the degrees of the numerator? So in this book, they use numerator and denominator. Um, well, again, I guess it's probably because like, when you do the work, it's the numerator and denominator. The between group, or in, this, or in the calculator, the factor group is the numerator. And the within group, or in this one here, the error group is the denominator. So um, when you do them by, if you do them out, you have to know, well, which is it? So remember I told you the F, it's a, the F statistic is a ratio. So there's a numerator and a denominator. So when I do the math, like I can look and go, okay, well, there's three groups. One less than three is two. So that's where that two comes from. Then there were 15 things, one, two, three, four, five times three is 15. It's nice when they're the same because you can just do the multiplication. So there's 15 minus how many groups there were. There's three groups, so 15 minus three is 12. And then what is the distribution? Well, it's an F distribution. ANOVA uses F because, you know, ANOVA is fun. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I, like, I guess because they, they couldn't call it Fun Nova, you know, that would be a different thing. No Fun Novas. Um, so it's the F statistic and then the numerator and the denominator. So you just have to go, okay, well, 12 and 2 and 12. So they have a bunch of wrong ones. And then, you know, here's the 2 and 12. F. What is the test statistic? Well, all right, let me look. So I have my data in. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to calc. I'm going to go to tests. ANOVA. And then I have list one, comma, list two, comma, list three. And enter. All right, well, so here's my F statistic, 0.696. So they round to two decimal places. What is the p value right here? 0.5175. What does it mean? Well, it's the chance of getting those things if the hypothesis is true. What does it look like? This is always going to be a skewed test, and it's always going to be over here because we're always looking to see is it greater than. All right, this is our rejection region over here. Okay, with the 0.05, it's probably way down here because notice we're at 0.50, <laughs> So that obviously that's why that's half. All right, and so, but it's always looking to see if is it greater than that because it's always a one tail test. And then what are we going to do with it? Um, oh, what is alpha? Uh, I guess they told us a different number um, at 10%. So. That's why it's 0.1. 
usually they're 0.05. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, if this number is bigger than this, we don't reject, which is what this one says. So alpha is less than the p-value, so we do not reject the null hypothesis, so we don't reject the null hypothesis. And what does it mean? Well, it means that either there is sufficient evidence to uh, assume that at least one is different, or there isn't enough evidence to assume one is different. And so we're reje not rejecting, so there isn't enough sufficient evidence to reject it. And that's it. And the other two problems are exactly the same. It, 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 this one has four columns in it. That's the big difference between these three problems is that um, this one has more rows, <laughs> this one has more columns, but there's the, the work and all the stuff is exactly the same. You're just going to really put this data in, look for these two numbers. You know, here's are my degrees of freedom for uh, the first part. Here's my degrees of freedom for the second part. This number, this is the numerator. The factor is the numerator. The error is the denominator. And that's all they care about. They don't ask about the sum of squares. They don't ask about the mean of the squares. Um, they certainly don't ask what this is. Uh, and you know they want these two numbers. So that's all you have to do. And it, so the longest part of this is typing the data in. The rest of it takes no time at all, <laughs> um, uh, which is kind of scary. Um, so that's why I added in the uh, other piece, because it's like there's nothing like I could really just do this and chapter 11 in one sitting and give you guys a whole extra week. It probably maybe someday I'll, I'll just do that. Uh, just combine these two homeworks into a single and two chapters into a single thing. Um, but the other thing that I think is funny is that the, the other classes don't even cover these two things. It's like these are the biggest parts and they don't get covered. Um, they cover regression, um, but the, the last three chapters are kind of like where all the stuff is that actually happens in statistics. Um, we do a lot of you do a lot of regression. You're looking to see are there more because usually there's more than two groups to test for hypothesis. Um, so like chapter ten is important because it's t testing against two things, and then eleven is you're looking to see does something do does it fit a distribution that's an important thing um you're looking to see is it is there independence between um a contingency table that's a fairly useful thing chapter 12 is regression and then chapter 13 is well if i have more than two things are they equal and i don't want to do uh this this year has six tests like i'd have to do six hypothesis tests i don't want to do that if i don't have to if I find that they are different, well, then I can start testing to see, well, where are they different? And first, I'll look to see, well, which ones look like they're different? You know, which ones are, you know, have a really high, I'll take the averages and find them and look to see, well, where are my differences? And I can do it on an ANOVA ta a table because the calculator doesn't give me that, but I can look here and go, well, which groups look like they're different? You know, maybe this group and this group. You know, the less than 20s and the um, over 40s, you know, the people over 40. Those look like there's vast differences. Maybe I'll test those, you know, and I could push those three these three groups together into one thing. You know, is there a difference between these two groups, you know, under, thir under 40 and over 40? I could easily test that because, like, these are much lower than these. So I could easily fine and go, all right, well, let me just test those and see if there's groups difference there if I found that there was one group that was different. And then from that, I could then go, all right, well, at least there's a difference between, I can see the difference between 30s and, you know, 40 and over 40, you know, um, that they got them right or wrong. So it allows you to, you know, do it a little quicker, you know, look for ones that definitely seem to be different. Um, but like I said, usually you have a control group. So then you look to see, well, if there's no difference between all of them, then I don't care about it. But if there's a difference, if there is a difference, I'm going to take the control group and I'm going to take whatever other groups look like they're vastly off. And so, oh yeah, this one with the the, the plant that got no sun didn't grow at all. Um, so I'm going to test that. Okay, yeah, they need it needs sunlight. You know, the um, the 
the group that looks had singing and not singing. I sang to the plant, but everything else stayed the same. Those look the same. Let me see. Yeah, okay, I don't need to sing to a plant. All right. Um, you know, it had nothing. I didn't sing to it. So I can stop singing to my plants if I want to, but I need to apparently give it food and water and sunlight. You know, I need to give it sunlight and water. So those are things that do need to happen with a plant. And you could go, all right, well, that's what I, now I have, I found out how to grow a plant um, from all the things that I've read, you know, all the things that people do to it. But that's what you would look for. Okay, first look to see, is there a difference? And then go from there. All right. Um, like I said, I, so I just want to bring up the calendar. Uh, here. Um, so we are here on December 5th. Uh, next week is the 12th, and then the week after that is the 19th. Everything has to be in by the 19th. Okay, you're going to stop moving around now. All right, so next week here, I would recommend you take test four. All right, during this time. I mean, you can take it now, you know, if you really want to. Um, you know, but like starting now, but like you have a two hour, you have a three hour time period where you can, uh, for the class. So you might as well just use it and then you can study, <laughs> you know, get chapter 13 done, which shouldn't take you that long. Uh, Cause like I said, the longest part is to plug the numbers in. Um, then take the test, you know, this week. And um, I will, uh, try to get the, those grades in, but like I said, if you, I would look now to see if you um, know, but I can give it to you. Uh, it's probably in here, which I haven't looked at um, because, like I said, unless they don't come to my mail anymore, which is weird. So um, yeah, I will. I will grant those. Uh, hmm. All right. Um, I didn't get anything in my email because I just looked. All right, it's being temperamental. Nice, everything's frozen. Always a good thing. Okay, so um, are we having class next Saturday? We do not have a class next Saturday. I just am waiting for my. This is our final to, class. Pretty much, yeah. Nice picture. Thanks. Um, this was in obviously Barcelona. Ah, good. Things are back to normal. All right, let me try to get my. Email. Also wondering if you got all my homework. Um, it's in there. I probably haven't uh, looked at it yet because I just wanted to get those the test grades in. Okay. Uh, but I will uh, definitely do that. That's what I'm planning on doing after I kind of end all this stuff. Um, so I will those those of you who just said that they sent an ax, asked axed for a an extension I will do those. Um, oh, also that you I, that you should be getting a thing for um, uh, evaluation. Um, uh, so please fill those out. Weird, yeah. I haven't. I didn't get any of them. Um, I didn't get any of my emails in my uh, on my phone because I checked it on a daily, like regularly, but because I don't come to this and look at it. But I, there was no emails on my phone, so that's kind of strange. All right. Um. So I will 
Yeah, so if you have to take the final, right, remember it's a project. It's going to be um, chapters two. Here, let me bring up the, the, the final. It, 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 it's coming, I'm sure. Professor, just as that's loading, I'm just curious. On the grade tab on Blackboard, it says there's a chi chi squared project. Yes. So we just skip over that for the semester, we, or we we we, we yeah. Um, so the usually I have you guys do, like we did the um the the what were those candies the the sour patch kids. Yeah. I haven't I haven't put the grade in. I thought I put the grades in, but I guess I hadn't. Um, that's the project. So. And the, this one here, the, the, this uh, looking at the uh, two things. Like I usually will have you guys do it yourselves, um, but it's just easier to like, like in small groups, and then you, you present it. But it's hard to do like that, so um, I now have I just did it all together. So correct. If you don't, if you get an A, you do not need to do the um, the final. So that includes A minuses. If you have it like a, if you have a 90 or better, you don't have to do the yeah go away. So this is a project. I probably should turn that into a PDF so it'll just open, but whatever. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, what I would like you to take this survey. So even if you don't have to do the final, please fill out this survey because I actually like in this in the um, uh, the evaluations they give you a place to write stuff and nobody ever looks at it. Um, I know this because I did evaluations for, I, I was in charge of evaluations for two years and I had all the um, evaluations in my office uh, every semester and nobody ever came to look at them. So um, I know they have to then keep them at like for a year after that in the, uh, the HN Human Resources. I doubt anybody goes there to look for the, uh, and so the only way to see the comments is to actually physically get the paper, because we get a little printout that just takes all the numbers and, and, and averages them. So, because um, it's a bubble dot, so they just scan it and find the, they take the numbers. So nobody ever reads the comments. Um, and, and don't, if a teacher tells you, oh, yeah, I read the comments, I know they don't because I, like I said, I had them in my office for two years and nobody ever asked for them. Um, there was not a single teacher that asked me asked to see their their evaluations. Um, so, uh, including myself. So, I mean, I would read them because I had them in my office, but uh, that was the only time I ever read my comments. And I've been teaching at this school for over ten years. <laughs> uh, so, because I ask you to to fill out the survey instead. Um, Oh, that's why. Uh, which you know, it is just what did you like? What don't you like? Uh, what could I do differently? Um, oh, nice. Uh, so um, I just like to have an idea of what people think. You know, what would you tell students in the future? And I think it asks, um, which is pretty much gets the same thing. Uh, come to class, do the notes, pay attention. You know, the homework is, is is done in class, so come to class. You know, like those are the things that like so I don't I don't necessarily, but I still read it. Um, but I probably should change that one. But I just like to know what people liked and what they don't like, and what I how I can make things better. And um, and uh, and it's I think it's nice that I don't charge you a cover charge. Uh, so um, for all the jokes. So if you don't have an A, you do need to do. This and this is a this is why I try to get people to get A's because you know it's a lot of work. Um, and the thing is, 
you don't necessarily have to do the whole thing, you know. Um, well, I guess. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. Um, but so we have uh, an analysis of your data. So in the uh, in here, there's climate change. Don't ask where I got this because I can't find it anymore. I don't know. I have no idea where I found this. Um, and it's old, so it needs to be updated. But it's like, um, and it's probably not showing up over here. It's going to show up over there. So here. Um, it's climate data from um, some point in time. And I don't know when. Um, there. OK. So when that data shows up, I'll, I'll look at it again. So you're going to pick two columns, and you need to get 60 pieces of data from those two columns. All right, um, 60 countries. All right, not every call, not every country has data for every little piece. So um, the other thing I would tell you is you know, uh, I would avoid population um, just because you have countries like Aruba and um, companies, countries like, you know, uh, China, which have really, really, really big numbers. Obviously, this is old because this is 1.3 billion people. Um, it's from 2011. Uh, so I would look for things that you know, they and they don't have to be related at all. Like, there's nothing that ha and I don't care if you pick temperature or not. It's like I realize it's it's global warming data, but if you want to pick the number of physicians and nurses and emissions, go for it. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, or precipitation and um, projected annual temperature change. You know, uh, fine. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, whatever things you want to to pick, you pick those two those two columns, and then you find 60 pieces of data. You can randomly pick it. You can do it systematically. You know, you can start here and then take every fifth one. I don't care. However, you want to do it, that's how you do it. All right, but you have to say this is how I did it. All right, and this is how I got my data. All right, did you randomly sample these and roll a dice and go, okay, I'm going to uh, pick the you know uh, one through six, and I'm going to pick, you know, then I'm going to go to the next six and go one through six, whatever. However you wish to do it, it's up to you. All right, but you explain to me how you picked your data. And then you give me the data. All right, and then you find make frequency tables um, for the two things. Um, then you look at, uh, you know, histograms. You're going to make a histogram. You're going to um, find the mean, median, and mode. You're going to look to see, is it normal? Is it skewed? Is it universal? Is it uh, universal? Is there no distribution whatsoever? That's what you can look at the histogram for. Then you're going to give me the, the five number summary, you know, minimum, maximums, quartiles, uh, the median, the mode, um, standard deviations, uh, and then Tell me what you range, and then tell me what you found. What does it mean? What What do you know about your data? Is it normally distributed? Is it uh, universe, uniformly distributed? Is there no distribution? Is one, um, you know, do they seem high? You know, whatever, whatever you think about the data that you collected. So that's part one. Part two says, is there a correlation between the two things? So you're going to do regression between the two pieces of information of, of data. Okay, between the two columns, and you're going to collect all, do all those little pieces. So this is chapter 12, and then you're going to do a hypothesis test because um, every country has um, high or low. Um, although you may find weird that Algeria is. Um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Did I take it out? Ah, so you'll find high income. <laughs> um, don't, this isn't a country, all right? And it's weird that it, it's high income, but it's under low income. 
Um, I don't know. That was that's weird in itself. But so you'll find they're broken up into high income and low income countries. All right. So when you're done, you're going to do a hypothesis test to see is there a difference between these. So let's say I put, picked uh, annual precipitation. Do low income uh, is the average uh, precipitation the same between high income countries and low income countries? And then you do a hypothesis test. All right. That's it. So those are the three pieces that you have to do. So there's just and there's lots of little parts to them because that's what there are. There's lots of little parts. You know, you know what is the p-value? What is the um, you know why did you pick? What's the null hypothesis? What's the what does it mean? What is the alternative hypothesis? Uh, what is your what is your conclusion? You know, I found that uh, yes, the average rainfall between high-income countries and low-income countries is not the same. You know, high-income countries have more rain. Done. All right. I, I did a hypothesis test that high-income countries had greater rain than low-income countries. All right. And I, re, I rejected the hypothesis, so there is, you know, these are, they have more rain. That, that's how that works. All right. I have no idea if that's true. And again, it's all going to depend upon your data. So, um, you know, it may or may not be true. And then here you're going to do your regression. Is there a correlation? What is the regression equation? Um, it's fine. You're going to make two. You're going to pick take two of your values and find what the predicted values are. Find what the error is. The error is remember just the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So um, what are things that you have? Do, were there outliers? Did they affect your your regression? Um, so you're going to graph them. You're going to find regression. You're going to find correlation. You know, yes or no. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is there none? Is it high? Is it low? Um, is it strongly correlated? Is it weakly correlated? So you're going to do all those things. All right. So it's a lot to do. This is why it's better to get an A on the tests. Because <laughs> And again, it's only going to be for those of you who don't have it, but you know, have an A. So um, you'll have to do that again. And that, again, is also due by the end of um, the semester, So, which is the 19th. The 19th is the last day. So we don't have class next week, so you have time to work on the final and test four. OK. Um, and so you have all this time now from Next week and the week after, it has like it has to be turned in because classes are done. So I have to. Uh, so that's so if you don't have an A, you know, I would take the test beforehand, see did you do well. All right. Um, what chapters are test for? Eleven and thirteen. All right. And um, and so then next week, if you have to work on the final, that's what you can do. Uh, when do we know the final grade? Um, like you can look to see. Uh, remember, I look in here, and you know, here, like I took the homework grade right from here. So if you have a uh, an 85 or better, it's an A. If you have a 70 to 85, it's a B. If you have below 70, it's a C. So, um, uh, so can we know if we have to do the project or not? Uh, I put the information in. I would look now in the grade book. If um, you have an A now, you probably will still have an A. Um, so I'm gonna like this is the cutoff. If you have an A now, you're you're don't worry about the final. All right. If you don't have an A, this is when you're like, oh, I'm probably going to have to do the final because I won't. I like I'll get to the grading. Of, I'll put grade four in there, test four in there, probably, you know, because it's not due until you know after you've already started. So look now, and you, I can look and I could look and tell you if you have uh, like who has to take a, a, the test. I just, um, yeah, please, I like to know. All right, so.
Let me just go through quick. Um, let's see what's. Let me just do these. Da, 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 da. Roy Duck, maybe somebody's mother. Um. Oh, you can do, ask me the question on p-value. I can do this and talk. Uh, do that at the same time. So what's your question about p-value? I'm gonna pull it up. I'll ask you in one second. Okay. Okay, so So the people who need to take the final who are here, let's see. Uh, Karina. Ramis, Vanessa, and Sierra. Uh. 
So, um, So there you go. So uh, Karina, Ramis, Vanessa, and Sierra. And Sierra, you're pretty close to not having to take it. Um, so, yeah. Professor. Yes. You have your question now? Yes. So my question was, uh-huh, um, and this is what I had sent in the email, says, how do I determine what my null and alternative hypotheses are using T statistics, what function is needed? Okay, so your null and alternative, so if you're looking to see, um, remember, it all, that all has to do with uh, whether or not you're dealing with greater than or less than, um, so let me get to chapter 10. Okay. So your null and alternatives have to do with whether or not what you're, what it's asking. So if uh, they want to know, are they, um, so right here, a student at four-year college uh, claims that the average enrollment is higher at four-year colleges than at two-year colleges. So you're going to have to look to, at the problem to say, okay, well, you're going to look for words like higher than, greater than, equal to, uh, at least, at most, um, you know, more than, less than, you know, is it above? Is it below? Those are things. You're, you're, those are key terms you're going to have to look for, to see you know which one am I looking at, and then from there that helps us tell whether or not we, which are what our null and alternative is. So because this says uh, higher, higher is greater than. So that tells me that's the alternative hypothesis. Okay, because the null hypothesis has to have an equal sign. So because this is greater than and they say four-year colleges are greater than two-year colleges, and then in the question they turn it around. So four-year colleges are greater than two-year colleges, which means that two-year colleges are less than four-year colleges. That's our null. So our alternative has to have everything else. So the alternative is going to have greater than or e and equal to. So that's why it's this one. All right. But that's what you're going to look for. You're going to look for keywords. Now, what is the difference the two what was what? You you, you got garbled there. When so what talking. if it just asks you for the p value? Like say if it gives you the data, huh? Yeah. Okay. So if it just asks you for the p value, you still need so to know. So just... I'm assuming uh -huh. this is one of the problems, right? If it right. asks you for the p value, you still need to go through the whole test to get to the p value, but you need to know whether you need to know the alternative no alternative to be able to figure out in your calculator which thing you're doing because the calculator asks for the alternative hypothesis. So in the stat, when you go to tests, so whether it's a t-test or a two-sample t-test or a proportion, you know, whichever one we're doing, so two-sample t-test, it asks us for the what is the null hypothesis? Is it not equal to? Is it less than? Is it greater than? So you're going to have to look in, like it's going to be in the question, and then from there it's going to be able to say, okay, well, what was the value? Um, so you do all, you're, you're going to have to do all the work to get the, the test, but you then have to look to see, well, which one was it? Because the null hypothesis is going to determine the p-value. Okay, because it looks at that and tells it, well, which way does I have to do the math? Where is it going to be on the graph? And so it uses, it needs this thing here to figure out what the p-value is going to be. 
Okay, does that help? Let me ask you a question again. Sure. Yeah, if the um, mean and sample mean is not given, do you need to calculate all of that beforehand? Uh, yes. So you will, like if it asks for just the p-value, okay. Like you would need, to, like if it as if it's a test, like if they give you data, you can just put the data in. Or if it's data, we could we can because our our tests here ask is it statistics or is it data? If they give you a list of data like this problem here, you just put the data in. If it's like this problem here, you have to figure out well where is the uh, mean, where is the, I mean, what is the mean, what is the standard deviation, and you'll have to pull those pieces out, or is it percent? I don't even, um, like, but in in this problem here, they give you all kinds of information, but then they tell you what the p-value is, and then they ask you what are you supposed to do. So they've given you the p-value. You don't have to do anything in this problem because all you're doing is you're comparing the p-value to alpha, and then decide whether you're rejecting or not. But in this problem, okay. if they gave you this problem and said, but what's the p-value and decide what you're going to do? Well, you have to do all the rest of it to get to the p-value. Like all this stuff here, all these parts lead up to what the p-value is. <laughs> you know, and what are you going to do? Because you have to get, oh, not that one. Okay. Like to get the p-value, you have to know the null and alternative hypothesis. You have to know um, what your means and standard deviations and um, sample sizes are because you have to put all those things in. Okay, so it just depends upon what they're asking you. But if they just give you the p-value and okay. then say, well, what are you supposed to do? Then you just compare the p-value to alpha and you're done. But if they say, well, you know, here's this stuff. Now tell me what the p-value is. Well, you have to do all the other stuff ahead of above it to get to the p-value. Okay. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Professor, quick question. Yes. Is alpha always 0 0.05? Uh, unless they tell you otherwise, yes. Like in the ANOVA test, because I put in 0 0.05 on the homework, and it's telling me no. It's whatever the, um, the test confidence level is. Right. So usually it's 0 0.05, uh, but there could be anything. And in the homework one, they said it was 0.1. <laughs> So, like the rat one, they they told you it's it's point ten, and a ten percent confidence. So that's the only one. But like, unless like unless they tell you otherwise, it's point zero five. Okay, because I'm not finding it on my calculator in regards to what it should be. Well, it's not going to be in your calculator. The alpha is given to you as a question. So here, like in this one. It's given to you in the question. Um, here, using a significance of, of 10%. Okay, okay. So the alpha is always a significance level. Correct. Okay. Using the using the five percent significance level. Um, using the five percent significance level. So the, in all of the tests that we've done, we've had one that wasn't five percent. <laughs> Okay, this is the only, this is, I think, the only question in all, and we've done chapter uh, 8, 9, 10, oh, sorry, 9, 10, 11, and 13 are all uh, hypothesis tests. This is the only one that didn't have 5%. So okay. That's why. Okay, thank you very much. No problem, but it's going to be given to you as a, as a thing. It's not going to, um, like, uh, otherwise you'll have to, um, all right. Got it. Cool. I have a question. Yes. When you go to um, my grades, the grade that's right at the top, is that your overall grade or is that just for homework? I don't know because I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> in which thing? Um, right in, in website or, or in Google or in, in, uh, in Blackboard? In Blackboard. In Blackboard, um, I I think it gives you all of them. I I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what it looks like as a student because I don't get to see that. Um, let me just. 
but um, I think the first one is like like there's a total points and then there's like weighted total. Uh, um, and then like you'll see a whole bunch of option, a whole bunch of things. So. That's why. The denominator is. Sorry. Yes. No, the, the gray looks like denominator denominator is less than the the uh, numerator. I that's I'm confused about that. Oh, I and made the, a mistake. I put a I I put um, I put uh, so everybody's grade is like way off because I put um the chi squared test is 20 out of 25 points and I put everybody with, with 100 so um, no. that, so that yeah. messed up everybody's grade yeah. that's what I'm confused how come the denominator is listed <laughs> thank so you I'm, fi I'm fixing that right now I'm like what I'm like how is it like so I'm doing that one right now I'm, I'm, yeah thank I'm, you thank you professor so so the it was there you go all right that's much better I'm like how did all those get, grades get all out of whack like, so there you go. Now it's better. All right. I knew there had to be. I knew there were more people who needed to take the test. <laughs> so now they're now they're right. So if you have an A, um, then you're good. Um, if you don't have an A, so yeah, let me just I'll tell the people who have A's. So I have uh, Samantha, Stephanie, Brownman, Nick, Rebecca, Padma, Leslie, Felicia, Lucy, Angelica. Uh, Sean, Beatrice, you all have A's. Sasha and Chandra, you're really, really close. So if I were you, I would take the test, uh, see how you're doing. Um, cause like, actually I'll, I'll, Chandra and uh, and uh, Sasha, don't worry about taking the uh, the final because I'm assuming you'll be pretty close. And it's not because uh, you'll Sasha, you have a and you almost win a minus, and uh, Chandra, you're almost win a minus. So I wouldn't worry too much about the final for you two. So if you're not in that group, um, the people who aren't in that group have like C pluses or, or lower. So, um. Uh, but like you guys are really close to that. So I'm assuming you'll do fine on the, this last test and that'll bring your grade up to an A. So, um, but yeah, so I, I wouldn't, I would take the test and then unless you bomb it, then I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, some people asked me to give them extensions. So let me do that now. Um, great book there. So I just I need to remember who they were. Uh, so I should, yeah, you're good. Uh, so Sean said he needed an extension. Um, Angelica and Cooper. Okay. Sean, Angelica and Cooper is at the bottom. Yeah, it seemed weird that Cooper that you hadn't done it. So I was like, what's up with that? Yes, Sasha, you're you're good. All right, test four. Uh, right, test three. Um, come on, bring up the calendar. Here, I'll just use that date. So I'm giving you the extensions to the 13th of this month, 
So, um, there. Those are saved. All right. Uh, anybody else need extensions on anything that I don't have information on? Professor, I have one question. Wait, what was that? No, professor. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, uh, I have uh, I, in my calculator on chapter yes. 11, yep. we have to go, uh, I have uh, T, TI 83 plus. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. so you have to do so. You have to do it the long, the um, the the long way, unfortunately. Um, but I did give you guys a um, website, which will. Okay, the is called fit right or something. Yeah. Um, chapter for chi square. I came across a website. Yeah, chai sky goodness of fit test calculator, right? That's the one yes. <laughs> yes, this right here. Use that okay. instead. Okay, yeah. Uh, in calculator, I could not find that. Um, yeah, you don't have it. Yeah, the T83 plus doesn't have it. So okay. you just put in all your observed values here, separated by commas, and then all your expected values, and you hit calculate, and it will give you okay. your, 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 your values. Okay? Okay, okay Professor. So, thank you. So th this is a much better better, easier thing than having to do it by hand. Okay. So make Thank sure you do that. <laughs> yeah. I think I okay. in the last chapter. Okay. Yeah, I know. Like, so if you don't have that, like, that, that's, it's a bear to do by hand. Um, I mean, it's doable, but it's not fun. So um, yes. extension requests. I seem to have lots of them. All right. So, all right, see, so, yeah, so looks like I have a, a bunch to do here. Um, so let me do these, uh, well, oh, JJ, did you need an extension? I thought you did okay, I thought you got it. Um, let me uh, work on ease. Um, I don't think I have anything else for you guys. So uh, have a weekend. Um, do test four if you can get that out of the way, um, and you know start work like if you weren't in the people that I listed, start working on you know work on the the final, um, and other than that, I will actually no I was, I was gonna say I'll see you next week but I won't have to see you next week. Um, that's when you're gonna start working on if you have to start working on the final do that if you're like oh I don't need to then do the uh, do the test four instead. This is the last class, all right? Because next week we have, you know, um, uh, stuff like you have like little bits to finish up, and then you're done. So um, it's been fun. What and about nineteenth? What about what? The nineteenth. Nineteenth yeah. is when the, is when the finals do. So if you have to do the final, that's when it has to have it turned in. Um, so next week. Like if you have an A, all you have left to do is take test four. And then um, I just told the people who didn't have to take the final, and that was most of you. I think everybody who's here on this thing, on this chat, you can kind of figure out that like who you are and um, you're pretty good. Um, and then, uh, so you guys, all you have left is test four, which is that you can do next week. And I can't help you with that anyway. So, um, and then the 19th is the final. So that's it. And Sean, you, you did it this time. Good man. See, that's what happens when you 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 keep coming through the whole semester. You 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 can you can pass. I love that. Life gets in the way sometimes, right? Oh, I appreciate it. I'm glad. But I don't have to do the final. Awesome. Yeah, and you don't have to do the final. So um, everybody have a great Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, what's the, um, the Denali, Diwali? Uh, anything yeah. else that happens at the, is it Denali or Diwali? Diwali. Diwali. 
I think the Wally is the, the, the car. So uh, I don't know which one, what religion that one is, but I do remember when my son was in um, a preschool uh, or whatever, like somebody gave him a Diwali card. So, uh, and we're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they're like, we, but it was weird. It was the same people who said, we don't want you guys talking about Christmas. And then they gave everybody a Diwali card. It's like, you know, Let's you know. <laughs> how about this? Let's talk about all of them if you want. Don't don't just like. It was it was the weirdest thing. So yeah, let's uh, have a thing. So, but I just saying I hate saying happy holidays because that's just so generic, and I, I just want to make sure I, I touch. Enjoy I, your I touch on both birthday. things. Well, I'm gonna enjoy my birthday first because my birthday is the week next week. So. Oh, happy birthday! So everybody enjoy the you know. You know, stay yeah, inside. Yeah, you know, uh, enjoy the show today. Thanks. All right, everybody, be good. Um, it was a pleasure working with you all. Like I said, fill out those evaluations. I have no idea. I'm assuming there's a link in Blackboard for them, uh, and you probably have it for all of your classes. So, uh, everybody, you know, thank you. This has been great. Um, I appreciate it, and I'm glad. Hope you learned something. Because if you didn't learn anything, then I didn't do my job. If you learned a lot, then I did my job really well. Um, and uh, I hope somewhere, at least somewhere in the middle. So, like I, I figure if you have to learn at least one thing when you get out of here. So I usually tend to learn something. So, uh, good. It's fun to do math again. Excellent. I'm glad you liked it, Nick. Um, and like I said, this is at least a useful math class as opposed to, you know, trigonometry. So unless you're going to be an architect, uh, then this becomes a lot less useful and trigonometry becomes very important because you very people, few people hate having bridges fall down, apparently. Um, so, all right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Have a good Christmas and good New Year's and everything else that happens in between now and then. Um, and I wish you all the best. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. All right, guys. Out of here. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Professor. Bye. -bye.